Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bruno Galan Talk Show. I have with me today the Angry Piper, uh, who's got a blog about painting miniatures, all sorts of miniatures uh, of geekdom. How are you doing, Angry Piper? Hello, Bruno. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I guess for the sake of, of efficiency, I'll call you the Piper going forward. All right. Just one thing. Uh, I, oh, told you one, I told you once before, stop calling me at three o'clock in the morning, man. It's like it's really, really <laughs> inconvenient. <laughs> yeah, no, I refuse to do so. Um, I refuse to stop that. And in fact, you know, now that you said that, I think I'm going to start calling at 4.30 a.m. as well. So, you know, if you want to push, if you want to keep pushing, I'm just going to make it worse for you. Um, it is what it is, man. So you have, um, <clears throat> so basically for people who don't know, you paint miniatures that are sized for, um, I guess, war games and uh, tabletop role-playing games, of course. And um, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is you have like, I think every year you do it, you have like this um, thing every year where you find like some forgotten comic book characters and then like you custom, you, you like change whatever miniature you have, you kind of change it to look like a, a forgotten hero from like an old comic from the 80s or 90s or something. Um, so uh, how, when do you start like doing that, not only painting, but like changing your miniatures and Kind of like doing your own thing. Well, first of all, uh, I, I just want to I want to make sure that's not my challenge. Uh, I, I got invited to do that challenge. Uh, I want to say about five or six years ago. That's actually uh, the brainchild of some other folks from England. I'm actually not sure 100 percent who came up with it. But uh, one one of the people that the person who hosts it now is is a guy named Carrion Crow. Um, and you can go to his his blog at Carrion Crow's Buffet. Uh, I think it's a WordPress blog. Uh, he, he's he's a great guy from England, and he he pretty much hosts Forgotten Heroes now. And the spirit of that uh, that that it's not a competition; it's it's just a challenge. You know, they 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 want everybody to to do whatever they want is to uh, to basically make a miniature uh, of a superhero or supervillain or something along those lines that hasn't had a miniature made of it yet, or that has had a real crappy miniature made of it that you don't really like and so every year uh, we do that in june and it's 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 a lot of fun um i convert a lot of old hero clicks to other um heroes like like this year i did uh I, I did judo master who's a you know pretty obscure oh, yeah. dc well, he, not, not obscure anymore he was in the um peacemaker series i heard that i i, I you know i i you came across it? I did not see it, and I, and it makes it makes me nuts that I haven't seen it because you know, I know that Vigilante is in it too, who's another miniature that I've converted uh, a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, it's 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 a, it's a really fun competition, but it's not it's not mine. I just take part in it every year. I, I gotta say, for for like the the character Judo Master didn't listen. I haven't seen the series in a long time. Maybe he does one Judo throw or something, but overall, he wasn't doing a lot of Judo. No, no, I mean, he I think like was doing more like Taekwondo or karate or something, but maybe the, that's how the I character's background is that he was, he was like, originally he was in World War II and he saved a girl and the girl's dad knew judo and he taught her he taught him judo. And that's like his entire backstory as far as I can find. Uh, he, he was a Charlton Comics character before he was a DC Comics character. Yeah. But as far as miniatures go, I got into miniatures painting way back in the 80s because I'm old. Um, and, uh, you know, around around where I grew up, uh, we only had access to like Grenadier and, and Ral Partha miniatures. Not that those are bad. Those those are fantastic miniatures. But I didn't have access to Citadel miniatures where, where, where I grew up. Um, I originally painted all of my miniatures with Tester's gloss enamel, which absolutely looked like like shit. Uh, we didn't use any acrylic paints. Um, because I didn't have them. And, and it wasn't until the 90s when I started playing Warhammer and Warhammer 40k that, um, you know, I, I got introduced to water-based acrylic paints and saw that it was a much better way to paint. Um, so, you know, I, I don't play Warhammer anymore and I haven't since pretty much the, the millennium. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it basically taught me kind of like how to, how to paint really. Um, and it's just, it's so, it's so different today than, than when I started because, you know, everything I learned back then in the 80s, I was self-taught because I didn't know anybody else who was painting miniatures. Um, you know, that's why I used the shitty paints and why my miniatures look terrible. And, um, you know, it wasn't until I started again with, with the Warhammer stuff and I saw that there were articles on how to paint in White Dwarf. 
And suddenly, like I was in a, in, in a game store playing games every every week. Um, and, and I was around other painters that we kind of helped each other out. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, hey, we'll try doing this, try doing this. But nowadays, man, it is it is a golden age for painting because there are there are tutorials all over YouTube and, and lots of online forums. And of course, Instagram, which is where I met you, Bruno. Um, yes, and, that's true. Yeah. I mean, the hobby community on Instagram is, is so welcoming, so supportive. I met some incredibly wicked, nice people there. You know, um, there are pros on this on, on Instagram that have their own accounts. Of course, guys like uh, Duncan Rhodes, who, who painted for for uh, for Games Workshop for a long time. Kev Dallimore, who, who does like. Uh, yeah, he's he's been painting um, for North Star Miniatures and just for everybody. Like you know, I still learn new things all the time from people. And um, I'll give a shout out to some of the people that I do know on Instagram who who inspire me all the time. Um, there's a there's a there's an account um, Keystone Minis. Uh, she she does some amazing stuff. Like I mean, she's like I, I, I I've been painting for you know I want to say well, geez, since the '80s, so 40 years and. Uh, my stuff i'm not i'm not a, i wouldn't consider myself a, a, a professional grade painter by any means uh, her stuff is fantastic um there's a new guy who, who i i don't know how new he is but he's new to me i just started following him he's a guy named wall of miniatures he's his stuff is fantastic uh there's this australian guy uh his name is imperial rebel orc or with a k o r k all, all imperial rebel orc he's a he does like terrain he does conversions he does Dioramas. The guy's just—he's just mad, man. He's—he's he's crazy. But today, you know, paint, paints are generally better today. There's there's thousands of miniatures available from so many companies today. Uh, you know, they come a long way from the uh, guy holding random weapon, which is pretty much what miniatures were when I grew up. I mean, there's still plenty of that out there, but there's a lot of creative and talented people that are sculpting miniatures. Just if you look at like Reaper Miniatures website, you'll see some dynamic miniatures that are still sculpted by hand. Yes. Um, which I think is is important. I I'm not a big fan of 3D printed miniatures. Which is I think what Hero Forge, like the ones where you create your custom miniatures. I think that that's um, 3D printed, right? Yeah, um, Hero Forge's stuff is good. Uh, I, I, I'm not I'm not saying that it's not. It's just the reason I'm not a, a fan of 3D printed miniatures is anybody can 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 uh, print a miniature, and it really depends on the quality of your printer. And there are so many people on Etsy with 3D printed miniatures. And what they do is they show you the picture of the STL file. So you're looking at something, you're like, wow, it's mm. awesome. And then you buy the miniature and you get it in the mail and it looks like absolute shit. There's like no definition on it. Uh, it's brittle. Uh, you, you know, so, so it's like it's really the reason I don't like it is because you really don't know what you're getting. And many, many people don't represent the end quality product. Uh, honestly, you you know what I mean. So that's that's kind of why it's the I, same issue that like dating websites have. Yeah, I suppose so. It's been a while since, since I've been in the dating market, but yeah. <laughs> so listen, uh, AP angry, for Ooh. Angry Piper. What's funny is that before we started, you're kind of like, well, Bruno, oh, Bruno, what are we gonna talk about? Like my blog and my hobby, you know? Like we'll have to to come up with other stuff. I was like, okay, okay. And it turns out, like, I got you started, and there's a lot to say. So just, just to point out, I told you, once you get started talking, you know, like, it comes naturally. Well, I can um, talk, Bruno, but yes. I, I don't think anyone really gives a shit what I have to say. So that's kind of, well, that's yeah, kind I mean, of you're, you're, yeah, we're supposed to kind of sell the idea that this is, like, a cool conversation here. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah talk, you're, you're kind of like... Talk a little bit about you and how, uh, how, how much of a genius you are, Bruno. And creating well, I, you know... The, <laughs> Truth be told, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So I, I don't want to waste anyone's time stating obvious things. Okay, all right. So uh, <laughs> I just I just think it's funny that you know you, you created this character and you convinced all these people. That oh yeah, really you're talking great. about yes. I got a channel called Chronicles of Crimson Hound, which I haven't updated in a long time because it's hard to schedule and all that. And um, the talk show was easy in a way to to schedule and arrange, but. Mm -hmm. That that channel Chronicles of Crimson Hell is for is for uh, tabletop role playing games like actual play they call it where we play an actual game. I create a character. So what I did with my channel is I'm the player, and I invite people to be the ones running the game the games for me, which guarantees you get to play uh, yeah there you go games all the time, which is which is absolutely genius. Yeah. And it, it's kind of funny because it's kind of like people who were invited was like oh this is really like genius because the, the story is ongoing but with different games masters and. Part of my inspiration was like, you know, in Batman comic books, depending who's writing, Batman can go through very different stories. Sure. And that's kind of interesting because it's the same essential character, but 
uh, when Grant Morrison writes like Batman with the Justice League, and then when um, I don't know, like Doug Monk or however his name was pronounced in the '90s was writing like the street level stories, and like those are kind of like it's the same essential character, but you can see like they're or in the '60s was everything was psychedelic, you know, and um, not officially but sort of, you know, and um, it, so everyone thought it was interesting on that level. But you you called out like the essential truth of the matter, which is I just find an excuse for very <laughs> very uh, talented people to run games for me. I think I think you and I, for, I mean, we, we met. I, I think I, I can't actually remember how we met. I do know that I approached you and I asked you if you would be a play tester on on one of my Call of Cthulhu scenarios. Yes, and, we, and, and we played, and and that and unfortunately. Uh, well, now I have even less time to play, but at that moment, I remember, like, I, I couldn't go back to part two, so I never found out how it ended. I'll, yeah, actually, I think you're right. Well, well, you, you told me really after, really? but because I didn't play it, I, I don't have the memory for it, because you kind of you have to play it, you know? If you're just told, you forget it, you know? I do, I do remember that, um, yeah. one thing I admire about you, uh, Bruno, is your, <laughs> your, your dedication to verisimilitude in your characters, because... <laughs> Like for example, I watch I I I watch the Chronicles of the Crimson Hound on YouTube, and the Crimson Hound yeah. doesn't have enough money for a car, and so many people would just hand wave that, that he gets on the bus to go to place, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is absolutely hilarious. Which is you know what, what kind of informed the, how, uh, some of the parodies that I wrote about the Crimson Hound. But yeah. I remember, and I will always remember, Bruno, that your character in my Call of Cthulhu scenario was like a middle aged woman. Yes, uh, you, you decided that she was going to be one of the greatest flamenco dancers in the world. And no, no, like, no, she okay. wasn't one of the greatest. She was just a retired professional flamenco dancer. Whatever the case was, yeah. you put something like sixty points in the craft flamenco dancing, and because I was like, you, told, you, I, I, that, you <laughs> needed a certain amount of points. I, I, I remember sitting, looking at you like, 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 okay, Bruno, listen. If you want to be a great flamenco dancer, you're you're one. I promise you, you're play testing a scenario. I am never going to ask you to make a flamenco dancing role. Yeah, you think scenario. that? No, but listen. You think you're not, but we never played part two. Maybe it would have come up. Maybe I would have told us something you didn't. You know, like one of your players, for example, went to a bar and picked a fight, and got this character almost killed. Right, it, trying to do an interrogation. Remember that. So oh, oh yeah. Oh, if I my character had done there, maybe she would have bedazzled everyone with her great flamenco skills. She would have gone on the counter, and who knows? Maybe she would have convinced people to befriend her. Yeah. Okay. I mean, all right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and as you said, you mentioned writing parodies. Um, you actually made a miniature of the Crimson Hound, and um, you, yeah. you sometimes do parodies on your blog. So, and which is kind of like the only. I guess it's for this for this character of the Crimson Hound that the only updates that he gets are the, the Angry Piper's parodies and the blood. Well, you know, it's, it, I, I, my, my version of the Crimson Hound is way more of an asshole than your version of the Crimson Hound is, and I I, 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 I would, I would you argue not, not not that much more. <laughs> I, do, I do thank you for having a, a sense of humor about your character. I just kind of oh, it's amazing. It's a compliment. <laughs> like you know, like I, I I like to joke that you're the only person watching my show, <laughs> and the, the Crankles of Crimson Hound, not the talk show. Talk show, I think I have two or three more people. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> listen, I, I, you mentioned like earlier, let's bring it back to you. Sure. You mentioned that you used to play World, uh, no, no, World of Warcraft. Wow, now my brain is really giving up on me. Uh, yeah, Warhammer 40k. Yeah. And, I, and now you don't play that anymore, but I know that you play a lot of um, miniature rules that are kind of like indie, like independent people making games where you can grab whatever miniatures you want, and there's a rule set. And um, do you think that there's a, a big backlash from, like, I guess the aggressive, um, money-sucking aspect of Warhammer 40k, where people just go and because I've seen like rules for like someone made rules for like infernal armies, and it kind of give you guidelines depending on what the miniature looks like, but you don't need to buy the official. Um, you know, miniature of this game that'll cost you like sixty dollars for one miniature because of the imagined stats of it. And so, do you th is that why you kind of gave up on forty k? Like it was like an expensive hobby, and you could do it without spending so much. Or, or... I mean, <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, part part of it was that. Uh, part of it was that I had moved away from from the area where I used to play all the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
everybody talks about how uh, Games Workshop is a huge money sink, and and it's true. I mean, you know, but then again, if you don't want to play the game and you don't want to pay their prices, you don't. And and that was where I was at. I mean, uh, when I stopped playing, it was probably probably around 2002, 2003. I mean, I I you know, um, I graduated college in the mid 90s and it's not like i had a ton of money uh and the, the prices for 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 games workshop stuff wasn't it certainly wasn't going down and when i <laughs> see what they're charging today it's like you got to be kidding me man like I, I i mean you know now that you, you may have disposable income doesn't mean you want to you know I, I talk about like if i won the lottery tomorrow and i i was like a millionaire um just because i could afford to pay ridiculous prices for things doesn't mean i would <laughs> you know what i mean um it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me so uh that that wasn't really the primary reason why i quit it's certainly a factor now um i'm, I'm kind of out of the hobby i still have i have so many so many miniatures bruno that that are unpainted uh, a lot of it is is old school warhammer uh fantasy miniatures warhammer 40k miniatures that i'll never get to in my life um if i painted a miniature every day for the, for the rest of my life I would be dead with thousands of miniatures left over. Um, so, so, you know, there's just other things to do. And so I went, uh, I, I found alternatives to, to Warhammer by um, pretty much, I, I went to this website called the miniatures page, which, you know, it's not a great website anymore, but at the time it was pretty cool. Uh, and it's a forum. It's really an old school style forum. And uh, I was introduced to a lot of different games and a lot of different miniatures companies. And it was like, wow, I didn't know this stuff existed. You know, like uh, Warhammer, the Games Workshop guys tend to think that the miniatures hobby is their games and their games alone. Uh, certainly they portray that. But there are so many other war games out there uh, that are that are fantastic. And, you know, for, for, for whatever kind of genre you're looking for, whether you're looking for... Um, you know, like World War II games or whether you're looking for pulp games, which is kind of what I'm into, um, you know, superhero superhero miniatures games for sure. Uh, there's, there's a miniature game for almost everything. And and so I, that's that's what really draws Yeah, but me. which one, don't you want to think, though? Which yeah. one has Henry Cavill as a fan? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he, he does. He is vocal about his Warhammer stuff, which I think is great. I mean, you know, I, I, I think well, it's awesome. Good. It's Yeah, it's awesome. Like that, that there is really one of us. It, it's yeah. it's really fun. He really is a true geek. It's yeah, and he embraces cool. it, which I think is oh. I think is fantastic. You know, but then again, it's funny because you know, um, I, I I think you're a bit younger than me, Bruno. I'm I'm 51. Uh, you know, when I was a kid in the 80s, it was not yeah, cool. I'm younger, but not like <laughs> dramatically younger. I mean, yeah. I I am. Yeah, I guess I am. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I was a kid in the 80s, it was not cool to be into Dungeons and Dragons and comic books and 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 stuff like that. And I went to conventions in the 80s where it was like you know 50 people in a basement and some guy wearing a daredevil costume with a tail that's a true story by the way uh, <laughs> <laughs> so nowadays you look at what conventions are like and it's everything it's 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 video games it's movies like yeah. celebrities go there and have panels uh you know so yeah. saying hey i'm out and proud as a geek that's cool now but you know again i, it, I prefer the mini conventions so i can actually browse the comics unbothered yeah. you know i don't have um, the patience for it anymore <laughs> yeah i i um I was there for the transition, like the, my, uh -huh. my age range. It kind of happened somewhere around the Avengers movies and all that. And you know, the thing is like back when I, and you too, I'm sure when we were younger, like people would just come up with random things and just kind of insist on it. And it was like, just, I don't know, like, for example, back during like episode two, Attack of the Clones of Star Wars. This dude in, in like the geek club uh, was kind of like insisting that Mace Windu was a Jedi healer because his lightsaber was purple. Like, where the heck did he come up with that? Or did he hear that? And he really insisted. And because he was the kind of person to insist on things, people kind of believed him. And then the internet kind of happened, right? And I remember when I was like in the, in, waiting in line to watch the first Avengers movie, this dude kind of behind me was telling the other ones, oh, yeah, so the uh, in the original, you know, uh, group, there was... Uh, Captain America wasn't there at first, and there were these other characters. And I could tell by the way he was explaining it that he just read it on Wikipedia that same <laughs> day or something. Or so kind of, and you know, like I remember one time I was like, um, I was doing this geek activity, and, and I talked to this dude, and we talk about um, the Dark Knight Rises, which is already a very old movie. People don't realize how long ago it's been. Um, and I mentioned, yeah, it, you know, it really. 
it really deviates from the comics I mentioned. Like, for example, like Talia, you know. And the guy goes, yeah, yeah. In the real stories, uh, he she she really tries to kill him. I'm like, no, it's actually no. Actually, in the comics, she she's trying to go like to be with him, which is different from the movie. And then he goes, oh yeah, but I was thinking of the cartoons, like you know that that's, that's what I was thinking. But in cartoons, it's the same. So people kind of like just come up with stuff when they didn't know, right? And now with the internet, it doesn't happen anymore. So it's kind of like a more legitimate. Uh, I guess it's more legitimate now. The conversations are happening around the hobby. Which is a positive that the internet brought, I guess. Sure. Uh, but, dude, I remember going into hubby stores, and I don't know if I just didn't have the right look. People would always treat me like a tourist. They thought I was like one of the new guys. They didn't recognize me as one of their own, right? They would like treat me like I was one of those people who saw the Avengers recently, and here I am. And then I would kind of like, I would get so angry at that that I would like out knowledge them in front of everyone to kind of like take away the only thing they had. <laughs> yeah, got, got to prove your bona fides, right? Yo, I, I would, I would like start coming up with, like whatever was coming for tabletop role playing is, or I would just kind of like, just like out geek them, like <laughs> to a point where they kind of gave up on life. Not literally, please, not literally, but yeah, you, you, yeah, I was literally trying to crush them because I, I, it's like it was so condescending. I don't know how to explain it. It, it was so condescending. Um. <laughs> Anyway, and sorry. There's still some Rantus of that works. nowadays too. I mean, there's 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 people that are like the well actually people, you know, and nobody likes that. Oh my god, the other day, yo, the other day I went <laughs> to a comic book store um a few months ago. And if a person recognizes themselves, fuck it. But again, now I don't uh, I don't bother anymore, you know. But I saw like a reprint of uh, of like uh, a story with like Batman facing racial ghoul, like that duel in the desert, right? Uh, Neil Adams and uh, Daniel Neil. Um, yeah, I have that. That's yeah. a re it was a reprint in the saga of racial ghoul. It was reprinted. Yeah. I don't have so, the but it was like a specific issue. I think is the one where he's lying in the desert, but I don't remember now. It was like a, a sort of like a fancy reprint. Yep. I think it was, I don't remember now. It, it was the comic book store. I think the comic was bigger. But maybe not. Maybe again. I saw it real quick, and I asked the guy, "Oh, is this like public? Is this?" Um, I said, uh, "Print." I don't remember how he said it. Uh, oh yeah, I said, "Is this one published by DC or a third party?" Because sometimes Dynamite will will do like um, third party reprints. Yeah. You know, or special covers, or special editions, or so it's not like sometimes like old stories may be reprinted by a third party. With the permission and all that. And this guy on the side was like, what? It's DC. It's Batman. It says DC on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I started explaining, no, yeah, but sometimes there's like, or he didn't say that. For, no, he said, but it's Batman. And then I started I started explaining. Oh, yeah, but sometimes there's companies that are third party. That, and he goes, it says DC on the cover. And I was like, okay, never mind. And it had the old logo, right? So it's obviously like a, I mean to be a reprint. But it's just that attitude of, of okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> I guess I was wearing a V-neck T-shirt that day, so he he figured out. I guess no, no, nobody likes the well actually guy. If you're that guy who like you know has to jump out twirling your mustache to correct people every time like somebody says something, you're you're kind of an asshole. And but no, I don't no like the well actually guy if he's right. <laughs> really? <laughs> I to a point. I think I think people vilify that a bit, like the the games the the rules lawyer in games. Well, I mean, there's, there's a difference. There's there's a difference. There's the, the people that just live to correct other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that that's just annoying. Like, you know. But if, if, they, if at like, least they're right, like, I give them some leeway if they're right because I don't mind getting corrected on something I'm wrong. Um, as long as it's not like rude, you know. But even right. if it's a bit annoying, I, I I kind of bite my tongue if the person is correct. But when they're completely off, or they or they think. I think the worst are the people who, because they know a little bit, they think they're really right, but they actually, the little knowledge misled them. Mm. Uh, so, for example, the guy like, well, this is obviously DC, and then he doesn't know that there's like sometimes Dynamite or other companies might do like third-party reprints or special editions of a comic or or a variant cover or whatever. Um, or I'm, I'm going to give a silly martial arts example, I guess, but... Uh, I remember, like, started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu many years ago with a friend of mine. 
and basically when you're it's only grappling there's no strikes you know like and basically if you're in someone's guard if you got someone in your guard you're winning you're in a good so even if you're like on your back and you have the legs or another person you're in a position where you can do some stuff right um so someone in someone's guard is in a, a disadvantage normally right so there was an MMA fight, <laughs> I'll make it short. And uh George St. Pierre, one of the greatest of all time, is in Mike Bisping's guard, and he's like hitting Mike Bisping from the inside. And he wants to be there because the thing is that George St. Pierre is such a good grappler that he wasn't like afraid of getting submitted, and because he's allowed to punch, um, there's not really that risk of Mike Bisping like submitting him. So even though Mike Bisping opened his guard. George St. Pierre was like happy to stay there and just keep like ground and pounding, right? Um, all that to say that my friend, just with the bare alone knowledge of, oh, having someone in your guard is good for you and someone staying in someone's guard is, is bad for them, was criticizing George St. Pierre, one of the greatest of all time, for not getting out of Miss Ping's guard. And then <laughs> I rewatched the fight like a few years ago. And I was like, well, obviously he doesn't want to get out. He's he's messing him up. What would he get out? <laughs> So, okay, I don't know if I explain that in a way that that's understandable, but my point is that someone sometimes like people have like a nugget of information and they run with it and they think, well, this is correct, but then they don't know like maybe a different context of this information. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, but, you know, talking about MMA. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I seem to do it all the time in my show. I I, I swear I'm not trying to do a Joe Rogan bit. Um, no, but it's, it's what's what, what, what puts me in mind of is uh, what we had uh, decided we were going to talk about a little bit today. Oh, which yeah. is <laughs> I, I brought the books Street Fighter role playing game. Yeah, uh, yes. you know, I got mine, too, right here. Yeah. Check it out. Like, um, I think that you and I are the only two people in the world that have this game <laughs> because uh, I looked it up on eBay because I was prepared for this conversation. And right now there is a copy of this game on eBay. Uh, it's it's re, it's for like I want to say it's like um, eighty two dollars or something along those lines. Where uh, I think it's listed at one hundred and ten. So it's kind of a difficult game. Oh wait, to get no, not enough. Oh wait, oh wait. G yeah. Give me a sec. I'm gonna get some other stuff. I wanna give me a sec. Okay, sure. Okay, I'm waiting for it to be more. Like, uh, let's see. But look, do you have this one though? I do not have the player's guide. The only other things I have, <clears throat> I have the, uh, I have the screen. Nope, I don't have that either. I do have that. Secrets okay. of Shadowloo, and I have the screen, and I have this thing. Have that's, you played this game, it. Bruno? No. No. <laughs> So, so I, I actually, I, I refreshed my memory. I looked through this book quite a bit in preparation for this conversation. Um, do you remember what the system is like at all? Well, it's it's basically the, the White Wolf system from back in the day, the, the Vampire Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, etc. But I think you, you, so you have cards and you have amounts of dice for speed. So who goes first, depending on the move you, you, you choose. And then like, it, so you didn't roll to attack. From what I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, is like you chose a card, someone else went with a card, and then whatever dice was left was what you rolled, I think. I, I something along those I, which I, mean, I think minimize the amount of dice, which I think when they did the new world of darkness, aka Chronicles of Darkness now, I think they kind of like like that idea of like subtract subtracting dice to kind of like minimize the dice pool, not understanding that there like a lot of people love the giant dice pools. Well, I, I looked this over, and it's kind of weird. It's a it's a role playing game. But I don't remember it that well. Yeah, I mean, the role playing aspect of it is the storyteller system, like you said. It's the yeah. same 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 attributes that are in all the World of Darkness games um, from from back in the nineties. The the dot sheets. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and you know, uh, but the the combat is done like you said with cards. But it also kind of requires miniatures, or at least the cardboard stand ups that they put in the back of the book because. Yeah, it gives you a yeah, hex map. Thing, yeah. So it's a card game, a miniatures game, and a role playing game all in one. And yeah. you know, 
it's just it's really really clunky so I, I i was wondering if you had played it because we tried to play it once and we got really annoyed and was like no no this, is, this isn't gonna really? happen well we were really big into the world of darkness back in the 90s i mean it was the tragically hip 90s where everybody was playing uh, vampire the masquerade and, and, yeah. and we certainly were and so when this came out i mean street fighter was was absolute street fighter 2 was was absolutely king in the yeah. 90s i mean i skipped many college classes to go down to the, <laughs> the rec room and play street fighter 2 um but also white wolf was king in the 90s so it's not yeah. it's not that surprising that they would go for and get the license for a street fighter role playing well, game it, it's, it's very much like the 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 like uh moody vibe they have though mm -hmm. look R ryu has uh ryu has uh five in all physical stats yeah, and there are some Street Fighters that have more than five. See, I'm, um, yeah, it's, so it's certainly Zangief, not. So how, much, how much strength does Zangief have? I don't know. But Zangief maybe. has <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yeah. Strength yeah, and two sure. dexterity. That, you know what? I don't know. How can, he, how can Zangief have two dexterity when he, like, flips in the air? Then, then, I, yo, wrestlers are overthinking it a little bit there, Bruno. <laughs> But I think I know that one time we must have just decided well, to like the style. Have... The style they put is Sanbo, Sanbo with an N for November instead of M for Mike. Yeah, I think they messed that up. Like, I don't think Zangief did Sanbo. I never seen him with the jacket. <laughs> I know that at one point we must have had, uh, you know, like Ryu fight against like some vampire from the from the books that we oh, had. Oh, I, I hope so. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't work out. It was, you know, it was kind yeah, of. The, the, and the art was kind of like some of the art was very much like War of Darkness looking. I, I kind of like the artwork in this. I'd say that's one of the yeah. saving graces of this role playing game. Yeah, for example, like, like this is definitely very, very yeah. fitting. Uh, this is you can tell it's not an anime style, but it's still very much a Street Fighter looking style. Yeah. But there's some stuff in there though. There's one with like a recolored guile holding a gun to someone's head, which. Yeah, some of the artwork is better than others. I, I think I like the portraits of the world warriors themselves. I think that look those look pretty good. Yeah, those were good. Uh, some were just like it looks like it's sort of like a '90s Derps book. This one, yeah. except colored. Um, Which puts me in mind of that Malibu Street Fighter comic that lasted. Oh three no! Years. <laughs> that was goddamn awful. Like where uh -huh. they sculpt uh, Ken, and he was supposedly dead, and then the, the, the issue they canceled. Like they were like. Oh, yeah. he was gonna come back scarred but alive. And look, I think this was supposed to be Ken, but they recolor him because I guess like Vega like messed him uh, up. I think this was supposed to be Ken. Uh yeah, that Malibu comic got canceled because Capcom pulled the plug on. Yeah, they were like, no, that's, that's <laughs> like not, no. Stop, stop what you're doing. <laughs> stop we're not liking me. this. We're not liking this at all. Um you know what's funny when I read this? It makes me think of uh, one, one of the guys I had on my show is McDojo Life. Uh, and Rob, uh, Rob he, do, he runs like a page on Instagram that calls out like martial arts frauds, you know? Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff, <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of like, look, I understand that. Obviously, Street Fighter is not realistic, right? But um, the way they explain like the, the some of the, the martial arts stuff in here, like the pressure points and all that, I, Unfortunately, unfortunately, it reminds me of those frauds. Like the way they explain it, the the, the and it's not like an anime thing or oh, we can throw fireballs. Like it's specifically described the same way those people talk, and that makes me uncomfortable. And I realize it's just a big coincidence, and there's nothing to be done about it. It's not, <laughs> but it just like I don't know. It like the vibe is not like an anime vibe. It's like what if the chi the people claiming to be chi masters in real life actually could do that? It's I don't know how to explain this, but. It's almost like in some of the stories here, it's like, oh, if you do the pressure point at this time of the day, it has, it has a different effect. I was like, oh, my God. It reminds me of like uh, George Dillman. The guy was like, oh, if like this will knock someone out, but if they put their tongue up in their mouth, it's not going to work. Or if they cross their toes and you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but, you know, we're talking about the value of books and, you know, it bums me. No, it doesn't bum me out. I'm kidding. But um I have this book and this was like really expensive online right and yep. i was like i might sell it i might sell it because i think i saw it for hundreds of dollars but now um no they they they're, they're bringing back zach smith to uh lamentations of flame prints they're going to reprint it so i don't know if it's going to have the same value anymore maybe for being the original printing i don't know 
Um, so that is one of the games I actually wanted to talk about today, which would be Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Uh, it's one of my favorite games. Me too. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. It's uh, um, yeah. It it's um, that Castles and Crusades for me, and um, I have an appreciation for old school essential. I really like the book, even though maybe the rule set not as much as Lamentations or Castles and Crusades. Yeah. But that, yeah, that's, um, uh, we should yeah, talk that's about that. Uh, we should we should talk about that. Uh, okay. Because well, first of all, Red and Pleasant Land. I don't I don't have that because it's ridiculously expensive to get. Um, Maybe I should sell it. Is it good? Um, I you know the thing is I actually the one one book I really used a lot was Vornheim back in the day. I have I have Vornheim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I don't, I don't part like of why it. I liked using it is because uh, I'm someone who can come up with ideas on the fly. I don't yeah. need a book like Vornheim necessarily. Um, but I find it fun sometimes to do use those things because then it, it's kind of fun for me as a game master as well because there's like, for example, there's a table there. If you ask for information, you roll in one of the results. If, if you have a really bad result, the person you're asking for information actually attacks the player. <laughs> I would never have done that, but right. it's just so funny, right? And so sometimes I like good books like that, that it's not that I need them. It's just that it gives me as well some surprises, you know, and if that makes any sense. I, I, I really haven't looked very much at, at, at Vornheim. Um, I, I, you know, but, I've heard but, it. it's really but this good. This one, I, I haven't uh, read it from beginning to end or anything like that. I just I kind of like have it as a coffee table kind of book. And I, it's, I have browsed through it sometimes and. It's is it fun. like Warheim in the sense that like this? It's you know this pages. No, it's an actual setting book. It, it's it's similar. Uh, no, it's it's a setting book. It's a setting adventure. I, I uh, have a hard time like reading books like that where you know I, I get the artistic value of them. You know what I mean? Where like every yeah. page is full with everything. Like Morkborg is like that. You know what I mean? Like the book itself is a work of art, but it's just it's so difficult. Oh no, to read but this is in. this is eminently more readable than Morkborg. Yeah. You know? Yeah, or or, or Vornheim. I found Vornheim was yeah. very. Like, like this know. is as as like artsy uh, as like it gets, I guess, and and then you have like normal text, you know. Like, see, it's you know, it's a beautiful book. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, that's one of the things I love about Lamentations is that the, the production value on these books are are they're just insane. They're oh yeah, so, it's, so good. It's something else. Yeah. I I saw your interview with James Raggi too. Um, yeah. I actually I actually was super rude to him at some point because. <laughs> And let, I was tired. I let it slip like, oh, Castle of Crusades, my, it's my favorite game. So I had a moment to fun that. And he's like, oh, okay. And <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. And that was, rude, that was rude of me, but I, I guess it, I kind of like didn't give the full context that if I am if I was doing like a weird, uh, dangerous game for sure, it's this game I would pick, you know? And Castle of Crusades is kind of like my default medieval fantasy game. So I didn't fully clarify what I said there. Um it's yeah, one of those things I realized I said something game. awkward and I wanted to move on myself. You know, like, yeah, this, sell, sell me on Castles and Crusades, Bruno, because you've been talking about Castles and Crusades for a long, long time. And why would I want to play that as opposed to playing, you know, Lamentations or uh, even Red Box D and D, which is my original Dungeons and Dragons book right here that I got way back okay. when. It's the first book I ever got me into role playing. Okay, that, that's interesting. I. You know, the, the thing is, okay, I'm going to give you a short answer. And um, I made a video on one of my other channels um, for, for uh, it's it's like a series I would do that. It was Bruno's Geek Reviews is the name of the channel. And the series of videos I would do is like Bruno's RPG Talk. And now Bruno's RPG Talk is going to continue on this channel. But I, I, I'll, I'll send you the link. And uh, if anyone wants to look up Bruno's Geek Reviews is the name of the channel, then you... On that channel, just look up Castles and Crusades. I did a few videos if, any, if anyone's interested. Um, but you know, it's interesting because now, um, Castles and Crusades was it's kind of like was kind of done dirty by fifth edition DD because <laughs> it's Castles and Crusades is 5e before 5e happened, but keeping more old school elements. Um, I never played any of the advanced editions. Except one time, advanced edition, second, advanced D and D, second edition, well, like one time back in the day. But it's basically what if, um, well, Gary Gygax, were, that was the last company he worked with, and he kind of said that would have been his third edition. Like, not that he made Castles and Crusades, but 
his third edition would look more like Essence and Crusades than what was going on at the moment, which was the actual third edition. And they basically just grabbed like, what if AD&D had like some rules that are more clean up, more modern, um, kind of like, you know, you roll high and it's a streamlined uh, rule system for everything. And uh, the saving throws are linked to ability scores, so there's no more dump stats. <clears throat> and um, everything is based out of the ability score, so no long skill list. But you can do, if you want to do like a smart fighter, uh, you just, you have like primes and you just put your intelligence as prime, for example. So without having to do a lot of customization, you can customize a lot very easily just by choosing certain ability scores as your primes. And it's basically uh, the, the sweet spot between old school and new school. And I realize people are saying that about Shadow Dark now. I've never had a look at Shadow Dark. Uh, but, but, you know, Casus and Crusades was doing that um, back in 2003, I want to say. 2005 for sure by then. But uh, are you? Do you have Shadow Dark? Are you looking for it? I, I do not have Shadow Dark. Okay, I thought you. Were, I heard you shuffling. Was easy looking for? No, it? I'm sorry. I'm I'm just pouring myself some coffee because, as you know, it's uh, yeah. three forty eight a.m. here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so um. So yeah, I, I would say uh, that's the appeal. For a more in depth, just Bruno's geek reviews on your channel, and anyone look, just look for Castles and Crusades. I did a few videos. Uh, my most recent video of Castles and Crusades, I think, is the more streamlined and the one that explains more how it's new school and old school at the same time. Um, but you were going to talk about Lamentations, and I don't want to interrupt that. Go ahead. Oh no, no. I, you know, I just, I really, I really like Lamentations. I, I, I mean, yes. I like the system very much because it's, uh, it's old school. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an OSR old school D and D clone. But um, uh, Jim Raggi made some really awesome improvements to this, uh, to this. The, the system itself i really oh, like yeah. the combat system i mean ascending armor class makes sense you kind of look back on the old stuff and you're like why did we ever do it yeah. this way and for castle um, and crusades yeah yeah i like i like um you know I, I like the setting that he's going for which is the quasi historical uh 16th 15th uh, 16th 17th century setting uh i'm not really big into the weirdness for weirdness's sake of of, of the thing you know yeah. um Grim Jim just is, is reviewing stuff right now about. He said the same thing, yeah. Yeah, he said the same thing, and I, I agree with him. I'm not so much in, into that. Uh, I just, I, and and I don't, I don't. There aren't too many. Although I collect a lot of lamentation stuff, there aren't too many published uh, scenarios I would run. Uh, I ran a, a, a witch hunter campaign that was set in colonial America. Um, the witch hunters were actually English witch hunters. Uh, and they pursued a warlock over to colonial America, and they were running oh, around. Was it the field. one that I almost joined, but I couldn't make time for? I mean, it's the only, it's the only one I ran, Bruno. So, yeah, that was uh, the one. So we, I, we had I some, wanted, some yeah, cool I remember. I remember. Um, and you know, we I did that for about a year, and it was it was a lot of fun. I think everybody really liked it. And Lamentations was a perfect game system for that. Um, as far as actual published stuff, I'm a as you know, I'm a huge fan of Kelvin Green stuff. I think. I, yeah. I like his scenarios are generally funny and cool at the same time. Uh, I really like his art style. Um, I, I just think it's like, it's so, I don't want to say basic cause I don't want to, I don't want to like insult the guy, but you know, I, it's just, it's so great when it, when you, when and it goes very, very well with the stuff that he does. Um, and I, I have to say that probably mid Vinter is the one, the only scenario that I would run directly from the, from the book itself, because it's just, it's, it's fantastic. It's so funny. I want to, I want to read something. Um, Just so on, because he sent me a list of questions when I interviewed Kelvin Green, Kelvin Green, and I forgot to ask him what the deal was with Jeff. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah. Um, and you were you were um, you know you're like you, and he, you he, he refused to answer right you told you, me you were you were disappointed <laughs> and I'm gonna read you exactly. <laughs> I said, um, Kelvin, can you send me by email a quick vid video? explaining the jeff joke so i was gonna insert it and my intention was to insert it uh -huh. into this video yeah because i can do like this thing where i can play a video and we would have watched it or something right sure yeah and then his reply was uh no i can't explain it <laughs> I want people can figure it out for themselves you'll just have to figure it out like, on okay. your own yeah I, I it doesn't matter kelvin i look forward to every release so i can find out where jeff is it's uh, it's it's just it's great it's, well yeah. i actually i am working on an osr book well, I, I say that, but I've been I've been like for years, you know, like procrastinating. 
but in theory at some point i should have one out and um i asked him for permission like can i can i have a character called kelvin <laughs> with eyes like a horrible death or something he's like yeah go for it <laughs> <laughs> so so other game other games that i really like um yes. you know we were talking about well, yeah by the way um i think lamentations to me what was uh Give me a bit, a bit of whiplash. Is that the very excellent game games master uh, book they have, the referee book of Lamentations? Because I have the box set, the uh, Grindhouse box set that has the yeah. referee book in it. Has given some of the best advice I've ever read for game masters, and I, I've like stuck to most of that advice. It changed how I run games. And in it, they they talk about the mood, the mood, you know. But I do feel like the randomness. The silly, dark, but random, you know, that some of the Lamentations products have does kill kill the, the weird creepiness for me. It just becomes like a bit like, you know, just random for its own sake. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and early Lamentations wasn't as obsessed with being a historical book because you had like the uh, Vornheim was clearly not historical. You had the um other books i don't remember right now but Power of the stargazer is obviously a straight up fantasy you know yeah there, there are a few and 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 i was down for that a lot i'm not so much a history guy so so for for me it's kind of like i i really like the system but i would do like um you know lamentations i would use if i wanted to do kind of like a gritty game of thrones type game mm -hmm. whereas I, i mean not really game of thrones itself that would be maybe even more like a another system but if i wanted to kind of do like D, &D but like very gritty very dark and i would go to limitations if i want to do my normal uh fantasy i would go with castles and crusades which is like the best middle ground between the lethality but also kind of heroic for me um yeah i just used the lamentation system recently uh, within a couple of months back or a month or so Um, I adapted uh, the unfortunately named uh, Oriental Adventures setting from, <laughs> yeah. from, from you know, from the mid 80s. And yeah. I decided, you know what, I'm going to update it and we're going to use Lamentations to, to, to run through an old scenario for, for that. And it, it worked great. I mean, um, you know, I think the, the people that I ran it for had a good time and, you know, it seemed to work pretty good as far right, as the, at the score. It's the same game. You know, like, yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. So should we talk about another game? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. One of my favorite games, hands down, of the past, you know, decade or so. Call of Duty. Right here. Oh, okay. Star Trek. Okay. So uh, like I'm a huge Trek fan. Um, and this Modifius system is, I mean, there's been like, uh, there's been several Star Trek role-playing games starting way back uh, with the FASA one in the, in the, in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I think last Unicorn Games got... Um, got the license for it and it was like a, a d20 game um but this one is hands down the best version of star trek ever have you ever played any of the modifius 2d20 stuff i haven't no i haven't um I, i'm not picking up new games mostly because i never get to run them anyway yeah. um so i I've, i've really like stopped buying role-playing games for now um i still love to read the books i do have like i flip through them still but uh also i'm not a trekkie uh so i, I you know it, it, if i had to buy a book admittedly it wouldn't be that but it you, you did mention modifius so yeah i mean this um, is this is kind of their they do um, a lot of stuff you know like uh, they they're the ones doing dune so i, I gotta ask you are these cross compatible can you do like paul atreides on the enterprise <laughs> um I mean, I guess you could, uh, you know, that, like, for example, another one of the games I want to talk about down the road is, uh, is the Conan, uh, which they use the same system, the 2D20 system. And even though some of the terms are different, um, they're pretty much the same system. And some of the mechanics are different depending on the game as well. Like, for example, uh, so, so at, at its core, it's a, a, a game that relies upon this mechanic uh, known as momentum. Players, characters generate momentum with every success they get. So, for example, uh, in Star Trek, if you wanted to, um, I don't know, fly your shuttle, uh, you know, through through this uh, nebula or something like that. And I say, okay, well, you know, it's not that hard to do. You need one success and you end up rolling three successes. Those extra two successes become something called momentum. They're points of momentum. And you can accumulate these points of momentum and you can spend these points of momentum to 
do things like create advantages or, uh, you know, buy extra dice to roll or do more damage in combat or things along those lines. So what you're, that's the currency really of the game and what you're supposed to be doing uh, because players are players and when they accumulate something, they want to hoard it is you're supposed to spend your momentum as when you generate it, spend it, spend it because you're going to constantly be generating momentum to do better things. So in Star Trek, you guys are Starfleet. Um, you know, you're the best and brightest. So you should be capable of doing really, really amazing things, pulling out all the stops when you need to. And that's what the momentum mechanic really goes for. And they have mechanics for things like um, for long tasks too. Like, uh, you know, I have to find the cure for this by the end of the episode. Uh, but, you know, I have to first figure out, I, you know, so, you know, it starts with like the whole, okay, we, we have to make a breakthrough here before we figure out this is the problem. And then we got to figure out how to fix that problem. And there's mechanics for that as well, where you're, you're making successes and you're generating momentum. And it's just, it's, it's really, really has the spirit of the show in it. Um, you know, I'm not really, I'm giving it kind of short shrift because I could talk about Star Trek adventures for a long time. So, so can characters like share momentum if needed? Yes. Yes. You can oh assist. yeah. That, then that's very Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can assist, uh, you can assist other players to, to generate more successes, to generate more momentum. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really, really good game, but, so to take an example, uh, to, to, to um, sort of contrast it with the Conan 2D20 system, which is another game I really want to play. I've never played it yet, but it's, it, it's, it's fantastic. It's the same system. Uh, but the momentum spends are much quicker and that you, you can generate and, and there's not as much of a cost to them because this is way more of a combat oriented game. Mm. Um, you know, so, so it's, it, it plays to the spirit of Conan very very well like you know it's but the you, same but you can do you can do like conan versus star trek you, you I mean, just need to like tweak the rules a little bit but it's easy to do yeah it's the same system i don't know why you'd want to do conan versus star trek well no not versus, <laughs> star, but versus spock. Uh, like conan versus spock you know i think that would be the yeah i guess i guess you could yeah but uh, yeah. It, it, at the heart it's the same system some yeah, of the mechanics like, like you put in the music was that it um the mock time music, yeah. When when uh, Spock is horny and he wants to kill his friend to to get some. Oh my god, dude! I just I just read a, a Star Trek novel that was so bad I I, I bailed on it halfway. Was through. it written by um, Captain Kirk? Uh, no, no, it it wasn't. But it was basically all about how Spock is horny and like you know uh, Kirk is in love with the woman that Spock wants to nail, and it's like you guys shut up! Like I can't. I can't read. I can't read this shit. But anymore. is this in the Kelvin timeline or the classic timeline? Well, it's the original original series. I think the the, the book was written in the eighties. Sometime it's like you know Spock. Spock is just you know. Oh, because yeah, because they didn't have the internet to get out of their system yet, so they had yeah. to pretend it was a novel. You know? Oh, it's it's it was wicked bad, dude. I didn't like it at all. There, there's there's uh, I read. I don't even again. I'm not even tricky, but I I read. Uh, there's someone who. Did like a recap of the books that um Shatner, there you go. Yeah. Shatner wrote for, for Star Trek, where he brings Kirk back to life because he doesn't like the way he died in the movies. And mm -hmm. it's very funny. I don't know if you read those, and I've read, never read them, but I, I watched a recap on YouTube and it was pretty funny what happened. No, I I I didn't I actually read it. I know that some something involved the Borg or something like that, but well, I he... <laughs> <laughs> you know what let, let's move on right, <laughs> what sure. are games do you... so another game i really really like yes. and i'll always love yes <sighs> oh so i have a reprint because i uh i left my old marvel superheroes box set at an ex-girlfriend's house about 30 years ago and that relationship ended and i never got it back so <laughs> my, my theory is she was waiting for you to leave it there <laughs> and she would break up and keep it she was just waiting like i have the cool. new york uh no the deluxe city campaign set still wrapped up as a box i bought it yeah and i have i that. I, I love this game I, yeah. and, and you know this came out in the 80s uh, tsr was putting out all kinds of uh, uh box games at the time and this was one of them um, i played all of them i love this game um it's just you know it's got its flaws uh it uses um the system that's known as the phase rip system, which I think is an open license now. Anybody can make phase rip games. Well, technically, I, I don't think anyone went and put it on open license. There's that you can't copyright rules. So if you change the terms, but I think, no, I think people have used the, the term phase rip now. They have. As a matter of fact, this is a reprint. This is yeah. a new, 
updated version of basically the Marvel superheroes game. It okay. fixed a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, the problems that were in the game. Like for example, in the game, uh, you know, if if you had what's known as remarkable strength, like Spider Man, okay, he, if you punch somebody, you do thirty points of damage to him. If you're the Hulk and you have incredible body armor, your incredible body armor is forty resists forty damage. So theoretically. In the original game, Spider-Man could never hurt the Hulk. Never. No, no matter what. Like, you, you could never do it. Which I would tend to agree, actually. But I, I know in the past he's, like, slapped the Hulk's ears or something. Sometimes. Sure. Yeah. You, you, it depends on who's writing it. The, the, the yeah. inconsistency in comic well, writing. I, no, no, it's it's actually canon that, that the Hulk... The whole strength also depends on how angry he is or what sure. version of him there is. So, you know. Yeah, that's that's right. also in, in the in the Hulk stats in the book, but yeah. they did oh, they, cool. they did changed a lot of things. Um, you know, it, it, with this update, it's not really an update. It's a, it's a it's a new game, and of course, it doesn't have the license for Marvel. So this is to make your own heroes, which you could do in the original Marvel superheroes as well. You could make your own heroes, or you could play with uh, established. You didn't, have a, you didn't have a system to to create heroes. They just gave you guidelines to create them, right? I, I think that's the no, original. They, 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 complete character creation system in the Marvel superheroes game. Yeah, you were you were mostly expected to play one of the uh Marvel characters. Well, it depends on how you wanted to play. I always wanted to run games and play games using the Marvel characters. I was never interested in creating my own superheroes for Marvel, but there's an entire system in here as to how to do that if you if you wanted to create oh, I'm, the, I'm the other way around like I, it, I might have fun playing in the Marvel universe, but I would like to to create my own character for it. Well, you can certainly do that. Um, I mean, I, the, the new one has an interesting take. I think that the new version where it's kind of like, it's the multiverse thing. So you can even have, I think, multiple players playing the same hero, but just variants or something. I think that's the draw of the new one. Because multiverse. Uh, you, mean, you mean the new, the new Marvel? Um, yeah, I Marvel think it's multiverse centric. Yeah, I don't. I, I haven't even looked at the new one. Um, oh, I'm, I'm not going to. I saw it in a bookstore. It's so expensive. Is it really? Uh, right I don't now. remember how much it was, but it was like, yeah, no. Now that the MCU yeah, is, I'm is never going to play it. Now. I mean, not in years, so. Yeah. So, so what's the name of the the one that the, the current version of the face rip system that you like? What was the title? You showed it a few times. Oh, the astonishing superheroes. I got this. Okay. Um, I, I know you can get it on drive through if that's your thing. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of drive through, but um, I think I got yeah. this printed on Lulu. So um, okay. Yeah, it's 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 really good. Um, again, you know, it's it's got that, it's got that. Um, you know, four color. Like I can't even see because I can't line up my camera because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, one of these. Uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> it's it's got like that four color comic yeah. look to it. Um, you know, again, it, this is designed for your own heroes. But if you have Marvel superheroes, um, you can easily just use the original stats of the heroes. There's plenty of sites online that have old phase rip stats there's plenty of sites online that because you know marvel superheroes came out in the 80s and it went to like the early 90s and that was all the published stuff so if you want more common like more current heroes like deadpool or something like that somebody's made up deadpool stats oh, yeah. somewhere on, on i'm sure they have dc characters and all that too i know that there's a site called classic marvel yeah. where you can get all of this stuff for free okay. um so that's you know that's that's awesome you get everything that that um, how many how many more do we have left um, as many as you want. I mean, I, I have I have a couple that I'd like to play, but you know, if you want to, you know, shut down <laughs> no, but I mean, because we, we gotta we gotta we gotta cut it soon. So I was wondering how many games are still um are still. Right, I'll, give you, I'll give you two real quick that I want to run. Okay. Okay. Very well. First is Talislanta. Okay. Talislanta. Uh, it's like I'll give you a real quick one. Uh, it's it's like a humongous alien world, populated with dozens and dozens of different races. Um. But it's a fantasy setting. Uh, and this no came elves. Out, no elves. There you that go. Was that, the, that was the that added was dragon. Yeah, no elves. And it always showed this guy in all the dragon magazines. Yeah. Um, kind of looks like an elf, though. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, 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 the setting is fantastic. Um, it's old school stuff. Unfortunately, it didn't get a lot of play, I don't think. Uh, it's got some hardcore fans. I've never played it. I want to run it. Um, you know, it bills itself as for experienced role players only, which I think is kind of snobbish. Uh, I know that it was Very reprinted a few times. Uh, the system's weird, um, but uh, it's been reprinted. I think it was there was a there was a D twenty version of it that Wizards of the Coast acquired. Um, anyway, 
it's really cool. I could talk about Kyle's Lance. I'm, I'm kind of, kind of, as a quick side, and I'm not going to elaborate because you know for time. But I'm kind of drawn now to these idiosyncrasies of the old game books. You know, like there's a rule for this, and we a completely different rule for this other thing instead of having like a unified rule for stuff. And I kind of like, I kind of like going back to those books just for the kind of like the weirdness factor of it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I like doing that too. Yeah. Um, the last game I want to run really, really bad is Agents of Swing. Um, and this oh, that's is, uh, by uh, Grim Jim. Yeah, yeah, uh, Postmortem yeah. Studios. Grim Jim wrote this. Um, yeah. it's, it's so good. I mean, it's just it's, it uses the fate system, which I'm not really a big fan of. But, yeah, fate. but fate is perfect for don't this. They, don't they not like him? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I think he said that. That yeah, fate, fate's put out by um. Isn't it Evil Hat the guys that put out Fate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah they, they don't they don't like him, but that's I I, I don't think I don't because know because they, they made they made it open to everyone, so it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, so he, I mean, this is kind of an older game. This I think this came out around like 2010 or something like. Yo, that. that, that's such a that's such a grim dream to thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, 1960s spy stuff is 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 like you know it's it's a lot of fun. So I, I, I like I, I like that Jim. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give any examples to the other style, but. I like that Jim is subversive without ever falling into um, um, meanness. You know what I mean? He, he's never yeah. mean. He can be subversive, he, or he can even like flip. Like, okay, these people like me. I'm gonna make a game with their system because they made it open, so I'm allowed. You know, but yeah. he's never mean, and I, I like that. You know, like, I mean, he. I'm not saying he never insulted anyone in kind of like in self-defense, basically, or or when things are like really bad. But it, it, he he doesn't like have that that I don't know. He keeps it in a way. He keeps it subversive but classy in a way. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of his stuff. Yeah, I really like his stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want to wind down, buddy, I know it's been like an hour that we've been talking. So, oh, I got I actually I have no choice. I gotta go. I could have talked for a lot longer, but. <laughs> You know, it's um, I'm not making millions out of this channel yet, so I I gotta do other stuff. Sure. Um, yeah, maybe in a few weeks. I think I think that's when I'll get a million subscribers. <laughs> Give it a few weeks. I'm sure that'll happen. I'm sure this video will help you. I think I think that's I think that's it. I think the Agri Piper is the breakthrough. You know. <laughs> um. Yeah. You just just link it on your blog, and I know I made it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that, so listen, uh, anything that you, uh, I'll, I'll link your blog, obviously, down below. Yeah, my blog is angrypiper.com. Um, it's been around for a few years. Uh, prior to that, I was on Blogspot for, you know that I've been the Angry Piper for 20 years? I've been known as the Angry Piper for 20 years. Do you even know who you that. are at this point? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing to me that that's how long I've been uh known as the angry piper but yeah uh, i've been around for a while my instagram account is angry piper um i have another account called zach's basement which you can get to from my instagram account angry piper if you want that on, on angry piper is just my miniatures that's all i do is i post miniatures um and zach's basement is other geek related things like comics and uh books that i read and games yeah. and stuff like and you also have an instagram for that one too yeah zach's basement yeah Perfect. Listen, uh, AP, Angry Piper, thank you for coming to the show. That was really fun. Thanks for having me, Bruno. I really appreciate it. No problem. Uh, and, you know, at some point, I think what, what I'll do is if if I ever have a, a guest um, who I know you're a fan of, if we can, like, arrange that at the same time, I might even bring you in to, to uh, co-host with me. Sure. Um, because I had a few people over, and some of them are complete coincidence. I didn't know that, that you actually really like their work. And I would have actually benefited from your knowledge of their work in some cases, like the uh, like the comic book writer whose whose name I got wrong at the very beginning of the interview. And Mike Mike Barron. <laughs> yes, Mike Barron, who actually I, I like some of. As a kid, I had a flash comic written by him in Spain, and only after the interview did I realize he wrote that. I was like, oh my god, I had a comic from my childhood. That was you. I told him after the fact. I created the, a badger miniature for Forgotten Heroes. As a yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know yeah. that that would have been I would have benefited from your presence for that one. So, you know, at some point, maybe I'll drag you back into the show uh, as a co-host, even. Co-host, then, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah if, if, if I think your expertise will come in handy, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. to my benefit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Every right, thank, you. thank you for coming to the show, everyone. Thank you for watching. Take care, everybody.